Hi there, Alec from Vacuum Spot here. Just going to do a quick video on a Vax Zen Powerhead. Um, this particular machine uh, is suffering from poor performance. Um, so we're just going to quickly check to see that the powerhead is operating because if the powerhead is not working properly, it's going to affect the performance. Then we'll have a look at the filters and see what else could be wrong. So let's have a real quick look. Okay, so the power head's working just fine. So, that means we've got to look somewhere else for the loss of performance. Now, I'm just going to move this so that it's out of the way. Okay. Now, next step is to have a look at your filters. This side's always going to look clean, so when you're checking the filters on this machine, you have to turn it over. And whilst that's not perfectly clean, it's not really bad, so I don't think that's the cause of our problem. Put that back on. Oop, like so. Now, there is another filter underneath the bottom. Okay, that also is bad, and in fact probably needs a change, but it's not going to result in the dramatic loss of suction that we've been told about. So, we have one last place to look. Now this one, this is a little tricky. This is the reason. I don't know if you can get over here and have a look. Inside the actual inlet, the machine is absolutely jam-packed full of fluffer material inside there. Can you see that? Okay. So that is resulting in at least half of the suction being just lost. Unfortunately, um, you can't just simply reach in. Oh, yeah, you can't get much of it out. Um, I'm going to try, actually. I'm just going to. I don't think you can get enough. Ooh. On some other models, this doesn't work at all. I'm just going to see if I can get in there with a the vacuum. <laughs> a good amount but it's not actually going to get the job done there's still enough there that you're going to have a, a potential problem down the track so unfortunately we've got to go to plan B which is to access the whole top off this and get in okay so now to lift up this we just at the front and just gently pry it up like so and I think this just lifts up straight as well. So just get in here. Oh, go this way. Come on. That totally doesn't want to come up like this. Although I can see that it is the right. There we go. Okay, there's one side. Repeat the process here. We'll see if we can't make this one look a little bit easier. Nope. So I'm just... Sounds bad, but it is just a simple clip under there. There we go. So you'll notice here, this is what we're trying to undo. These little clips here. They're just locking into the side. So now... We can remove the two screws at the back. One on that side. One on this side. Okay, and now we get rid of the screws underneath. There's quite a few screws on this machine. And it's got a tricky little catch on the side, so... Alright. Now, it's worth noting that the screws across this middle part here are slightly shorter 
than the screws that are found in the rest of the machine. So you've actually got to separate these ones and keep them in a, in a different pile because they are shorter. Okay, you'll see that. See there? Little short ones, normal size. Okay. Nearly there. One out of either side here. I actually can't remember if we need to pop this part off. I'll take these ones out just because it'll be quicker than doubling back. Right, I'm, I think you don't have to actually remove these ones. So. Okay. Now, here's the little tricky bit. You can this to separate most of the way there we go now once you get you can see you've got it split open here just a little bit you actually need to work it along there's a little hidden catch see here once you hear that pop we do the other side once we take this screw out It always feels like it's yeah, it's worse than it is, but you've just got to gently, but at the same time with a little bit of force in it, you can see the catch is around about here. <laughs> so when you get it, it just goes. So when you get it, <laughs> exactly right. I'll get that in a second. So anyway, here we go. Here's the important bit that you were waiting for. Okay, so we, so we can get rid of a lot of that material with the vacuum and plucking at it, but we're actually going to need to get all of that up. Otherwise the result's not going to be great. And all of this will in time end up in the motor if you don't do it properly, get it all out. Alright, now, if I take that camera, <laughs> will you just do that? Alrighty. So now, we can reassemble that. The bagless chamber also fell off. Um, it is down there. Alright, so now, <laughs> We're going to put this back on, and you do have to make sure you hear it doing the click. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Bagless chamber has come back on. See? Now, you know it's real repairs when you've got stuff flying off the table. This isn't some production. High, high, what do you call that? High budget production. All right, screws out the back. Okay, these are the long ones. Now, while we're at the back end here, we'll get these couple in, which are at the base. Tip him up like so. I'm even more confident now that these were unnecessary to remove, so don't worry about taking these off. Okay. Alright, now we do that. You just want to check here at this point that you've got a nice smooth joint. Um, you shouldn't have any gap on either side. See here we've got the gap. Click that back in. So now we've got a couple of the long ones left. Uh, 
Okay, one on this side, one over this side. Okay, now we do our three short ones. Other side. Now, from experience, I can tell you that um, if you choose a screw that is considerably too long in this spot, so if you start with a bench that's not clean, for example, you can end up with a screw poking through the other side of the um, the other side of the vacuum. Won't affect its functionality, but it really does look a bit daft. Okay. Last two long ones going in. One. Okay. Alrighty. So with those in, now we're just refitting our controls. So the cord retract. Now look, you've got to line up, this spring goes over this little uh, extrusion and it's also going to fit down, hang on, over to, let me just make sure I'm saying this correctly, no, the spring goes over this little extrusion, so there, and lines up with a little star shaped locator. Let's try it this way, star shaped locator first. Turn it around so you can see it. So here, over, and now we'll get the back end to just wiggle in. Not the easiest fit actually, it was hard coming off and it's not that easy to push on either. But it does go down there. There we go. And now the front fits in a little bit better. There we go. So we just test that zips in all right. Same on this side. Okay now this side the, the spring does go over the long one and that lines up with the actual switch actuator. So we'll press this in. There we go and then the front in as well. Now, it probably won't translate on the video that well, but the machine, to my ear, is not labouring as much. It's actually getting that cool air going through it. That's going to result in a much, much cooler machine, longer lasting and better sucking. So that is a simple repair on our VAC Zen powerhead. Uh, from Alec at Vacuum Spot. If this was helpful, please hit like or subscribe to the video. Thanks for that.